Hi YouTube, I've prepared a guide to help others who want to try out project cars and other game exclusive titles such as Kronos on the Oculus Rift Store. This guide should always work for project cars as it's running through Steam but may stop working at any time for Oculus Rift titles. So be prepared for your purchases to stop working uh, if and when the Oculus developers decide to block it. First of all, you're going to need to head over to the Oculus uh, Rift Store to download the software. Uh, I've put a link in the description box below and that will land you on this page here. You need to download the software and run it and also register an account with Oculus. Uh, now it's all free and it requires no proof of purchase that you actually have a Rift so it shouldn't take you too long to get it sorted. Once you've downloaded and installed the software, uh, which I might add by the way, uh, when you do install the software make sure you install it on a drive that has sufficient disk space um, to run the titles that you're going to be playing so any oculus rift titles basically will install in the same directory as where the software is installed and unfortunately there isn't a way to change that at the moment they haven't developed it like steam where you can just add a new steam library so bear that in mind if you've got a small c drive don't put it on there basically uh, so once it's installed, uh, you'll need to restart the OVR service launcher service from within Windows. If you don't know how to do that, the easi easiest thing to do is just restart your PC. Um, once you've restarted or restarted those services, you'll need to head over to the Libra VR project, uh, which is where you're going to get the Revive Injector. And again, that's in the description box below. That will lend you onto this page here and uh, some good guys basically have developed it so us Vive guys can basically play Oculus exclusive titles and indeed Project Cars uh, which at the moment without it you couldn't do it so the easiest thing you can do is basically scroll down to the part where you can see installation and you'll need to download what they call the Revive Injector once a small zip file basically that's gonna uh, mimic the APIs used by Oculus Rift, so basically it fools the games into thinking you're using a Rift when actually you're just using your Vive. So once you've downloaded that, um, you're going to basically extract the, that file or those files into the locations of where each Oculus Rift title is installed. So as you can see in the guide, depending on where you've got the software installed, you'll need to make sure that wherever the main ex executable for the game uh, is installed for each Oculus Rift game, you'll need to put a copy of the revive folder and the executable so it's in the same location. All right. Once you've done that, each time you want to uh, launch a game, you'll need to drag the executable onto the revive injector. So effectively, you're just drag and dropping your exe files, i.e. let's say the Kronos title, that, that exe will literally just be dragged and dropped onto the revive injector which will then launch it through that API. Now obviously make sure you've got Steam VR running when you're doing that. So that's effectively how you're going to do it for all the Rift titles. Um, it's pretty straightforward in that respect. For project cars it's a little different because it's going through Steam. So the first thing you need to do is download the project cars patch and you can find that again on the revive page here. Uh, again I'll provide a link to it in the description. Um, basically, once you've downloaded the file, you're going to need to place the patch in the same location as the Project Cars installation folder. So the easiest thing you can do is open up Steam and go to your library, find Project Cars, go into the properties of Project Cars, and basically go to local files. Now. Uh, one thing that you need to do as well for project cars is make sure you uncheck use desktop game theater while steam vr is active you don't want that on okay because that's going to basically place your games into a 2d format uh which effectively is like playing on a virtual screen within your v i'm sure you've tried it already but it's not what you want to do here so you want to make sure that's unchecked and then you want to go to local files and browse local files and you want to make sure that the patch is ex uh, extracted here basically you can see the, the uh, executables there in my one there so you just make sure that basically you've extracted the uh, the project cars patch into that folder if you didn't reboot at this point before in the guide uh, I recommend that you do it now and basically once you've rebooted 
uh, just make sure that your Steam VR is active. So I'm just going to launch it there for a second. And yeah, obviously a lot of my stuff, I've moved my, my VR stuff out of range at the moment during this tutorial, so you won't see that connecting. Um, but basically the idea then is to go back to the local files and if you've closed it, just do the same thing we did before, right click project cars, go to browse local files and find the pcars64.exe. Once you've found that, um, basically you're going to be using that to launch project cars now, you won't be doing it through Steam. Now the idea is that when you are running project cars, uh, you're going to ideally be sat already uh, into your seating position. Your Vive helmet needs to be sort of sat so that you're facing your screen uh, as if you were playing the game. You know, with your steering wheel, if you've got it, or your joypad, ready to go, so that your head's at a nice level, facing forward, looking at the monitor or whatever your seating position happens to be. Um, and then make sure, if you haven't done so, change your room setup and put it over to standing only. I just find that that works better uh, than the room scale, uh, obviously because of this situation you're not really going to be moving around. So yeah, just put it into standing only position, set it up, obviously go through the configs like you've done before. Um, once you're ready and you've got your Vive helmet effectively on your head already but not in its like, you know, so you can actually see what you're doing at the moment, launch the title. Uh, you're going to get a warning on the screen saying Project Cars does not support VR, just ignore that message, press OK, it will then launch into the game. Now once you've launched into the game, make sure that your head is basically perfectly still and facing towards uh, effectively what you would call as your seating position. Now if you happen to move your head while the logo is loading in, um, it will cause your seating position to go out of sync and where you're looking all of a sudden the screen will be off center to the center of your eyes and it's very disjarring. You can actually play project cars like that um, and I did that the first time around when I didn't realize and my head was stuck outside the car which you can imagine is a little bit <laughs> disjarring when you're trying to drive. So um, basically yeah, just make sure your head's perfectly still. If um, you sort of forget to do that, you can just completely just exit out of the game and relaunch it and then keep your head dead straight and go again. Or alternatively, you can go within the uh, dashboard, so you'll need one of the Vive controllers. Hold down the dashboard button, and you'll see at the Steam dashboard at the bottom, there's an option that says Select Recenter Seated Position. Just press that, keep your head dead straight, uh, and then that will basically reset it for you. Um, might be easier just for you to quit out the game than relaunch it, to be honest. Once you're inside the game, um, you can then adjust the details. Now, depending on your rig, um, I myself have got, you know, a 4890K OC at 4.5 gigahertz with two 980 ties. Um, unfortunately, Sly doesn't work at the moment, so if you do have Sly, you need to turn it off. Uh, you'll get horrific flickering otherwise. Uh, and if basically you do um, have a decent rig, you can pretty much get it around medium details at the moment to to avoid some horrible popping that people are complaining about. It just affects the draw distance and that. Um, it, the game is quite demanding at the moment. For most people, they probably get away with low to medium and just fiddle with some settings till it runs decently smooth. And that's pretty much it. So hope that helps everyone. Um, any questions, just feel free to put them in the comments.